Hey, good morning, Dr. Porton. How are you doing today? Hey, Victor. I'm doing great. What can I do for you? Up on the upper branches of this juniper tree, there's something that looks really bizarre that caught my eye. And I thought I'd give you a call to see if you could tell us a little bit more about it and whether or not we should be concerned. I bet I can help. Is it by any chance a, a brown, lumpy structure about the size of a golf ball? It is, and it has these really bizarre porcupine quills sticking out of it. Oh, yeah. Great find, Victor. So this is a disease called cedar apple rust. And in one of my previous jobs, uh, I spent some time working on this at the Virginia Tech Research Station in Winchester. So I'd be happy to tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, good news is that it's not really harmful to your eastern red cedar there. You might see that twig that the gall is on turn a little bit yellow, but it's no big deal. You can just prune it out. But Victor, are, are there by any chance any apples or crab apple trees nearby? There are. Uh, I I believe there's a crab apple up the hill, and I do know it to be true that there are some fruit producing apple trees in the backyards of this neighborhood. That makes a lot of sense. So this is a very interesting fungus. It bounces back and forth between usually the eastern red cedars and apples and crab apples, and it requires both groups of plants to complete its life cycle. So if you go and scout your crab apples and apples nearby, you might see little yellow spots on the leaves. and that's the exact same fungus. So what's happening is that those galls on your eastern red cedar are gonna release really small spores that blow on the wind. And when they land on young, tender apple and crab apple leaves, they'll form these little yellow spots. And then later in the season, those yellow lesions are gonna produce spores that travel back to the eastern red cedars. And the cycle starts all over again. So it can be a very important disease on the apples and crab apples. So if you're a homeowner that wants to prioritize your apple trees, would it be a good option to remove the cedar tree? You know, that's a great thought. In fact, historically, that's exactly what they did, especially in the early 1900s. They would go and, and try to remove all Eastern red cedars within a several mile radius of, of commercial apple orchards. We don't need to do that today, thankfully. And there's a couple of good reasons. First, we have some very effective fungicides that if you apply them at the right time in the season, do a great job at preventing infection on apples and crab apples. Also, we don't want to be removing eastern red cedars if possible because they are great habitat and food for a lot of our native birds. And then the third thing you can do is plant resistant varieties. So these trees behind me, these are golden delicious apples. It's a great apple, but it's very susceptible to this disease. But there are a lot of varieties now that are resistant to it, and that's a great management tool. So if you're a homeowner that wants fruit bearing apple trees, choosing the right variety sounds like it might go a long way in managing this disease. Absolutely right, Victor. It's well worth your time to do that research up front. Fascinating. Well, Matt, once again, I want to thank you for your time. And as always, thank you for being a resource for our arborists here at Bartlett Tree Experts. Hey, you're welcome, Victor. Call anytime. Great to see you. You too. Bye-bye.